You probably remember how the Gospel of Luke begins, but in, in case you don't, it's such an interesting explanation that the physician gives for the writing of the book. He says, Inasmuch as many have taken in hand to set in order a narrative of those things which have been fulfilled among us, just as those who from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word delivered to us, it seemed good to me also, having had a perfect understanding of all things from the very first, to write to you an orderly account most excellent Theophilus. That Theophilus must have been a special guy. He must have really been something else. And that Luke must have had a special love for Theophilus. Because he said, though many people have discussed this, and though we have seen all these things fulfilled. Since I know what I'm talking about, I'm going to write down a good account for you, O oh, most excellent Theophilus. One of the remarkable things out of Luke's ministry is how what he intended as to be a blessing apparently for one man, has become a blessing for billions. Who would have ever thought, can you imagine, if Luke could have imagined that that time he spent recording in a precise fashion the events that he had seen in the life of Jesus and in the birth of the New Testament church as in Luke and in Acts, he intended those as a favor for Theophilus. But how many billions of people? I'd love to shake Luke's hand. I'd love to say, way to go, Luke. It was worth the effort. Who knows how many hours you spent holding a pen, writing, recording, reflecting, organizing. I'd like to say, way to go, Luke. It was worth it. We can't say that to Luke until we get to heaven, but we can say it to those of Pioneer Bible translators who are Luke's in our generation. They're not writing for Theophilus, but they're writing for people whose names are far more difficult to pronounce. And they are being led by two of our favorite people, Greg and Rebecca Pruitt, although tonight we can call him Luke. Greg's journey as a missionary and Bible translator started as a teenager by going on a short-term mission trip to Guatemala with Pat Heil and being exposed to missionaries who were using all their gifts for the kingdom. Greg is a poster child as to the power of a short-term mission trip. God gave Greg a mission and then a very willing and gifted partner in Rebecca. In fact, a demanding partner. Few people know this, but Rebecca wouldn't agree to marry Greg unless he agreed to become a Bible translator. Greg wanted to be a church planter in the Muslim world, but he didn't want to be a translator. But I guess he wanted to marry Rebecca Moore. God actually worked it out where they could do both. And they joined PBT as a young couple 20 years ago and were called to Guinea, West Africa, where they served an unreached people group called the Yalunka, a group that was 99% Muslim and had no scripture to speak of. They started their mission in 1993 by spending a year in France learning French, and then they went to Africa. The time in Africa started with six weeks, six weeks of a jungle survival school in Burkina Faso. After that, instead of flying to Guinea, they chose to go by land. The story goes, 
Rebecca didn't want to leave behind some large woven baskets she had bought and had grown fond of, fond of. so a two-hour plane ride turned into a nine-day bus trip. Among other misadventures, their bus was hijacked in Mali by students. They had to sleep on a street corner where the local police stole some of their belongings. In another place, when Rebecca was brought to tears, a local official berated their fellow travelers, saying, okay, who made the white woman cry? In Guinea, they lived among the Yalunka in a remote village called Yatiya. There was a tiny church there that had been praying for a missionary to come to them. Even though integrating into the Yalunka culture was difficult, God gave them great local partners, men and women of peace, that now lead the Yalunka church. And during this time, God gave them three kids, Hannah, Abigail, and Paul, who still really think of Africa as their first home. In April of 2006, God called Greg and Rebecca back from Guinea unexpectedly to lead Pioneer Bible Translators into a new phase of ministry and an expansive vision. Meanwhile, the work on the Yalunka Bible continued, culminating on Sunday, February 3rd, 2013, when the full Yalunka Bible was dedicated in Yatiya and began to be distributed to villages all around Guinea in both book and audio form. The history of the Yalunka would never be the same. Of course, none of this would be possible without the support of this church and so many of you for so many years. But we as a church consider it a high and holy honor to be associated with a modern-day apostle, Greg and Rebecca, our friends, in the spreading of the gospel, Luke's in our generation. In commemoration of this partnership for the gospel and of your 20 years of service to the Bible-less people of the world, we want to present Greg and Rebecca with a small token of our appreciation. If you'll come up at this time.